All right, good morning and welcome to a coach's corner. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you do at university? Hey guys, good morning. My name is Mrs. Taylor and I am the marketing teacher at University High School. Um, this upcoming year will be my second year teaching marketing. I taught research there um, for about three years prior. Um, along with uh, doing marketing, my second and third year marketing students also run the Titanium School Store. So um, it's really exciting. I also sponsor FCA and I also sponsor Young Life. Okay, so you got your hands in a little bit of everything over there. <laughs> yes, I sure do. Right. Um, and how long have you been in the county? Um, I started at DeLand High School in 2011. I taught fashion marketing there, and then I moved over to university in 2006. Okay, all right. And uh, I, I know that you have some children, so how many children do you have? Sure, I have three children. My son is 14 years old and will be going in high school this upcoming year in August. My daughter is 11 years old. She'll be starting middle school. And my youngest daughter is nine and will be in elementary school. So I'll have one child in every section of Volusia County. Wow. So your life is getting ready to get crazy. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> or crazier, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, w where did you grow up at? I grew up here in Deland. I grew up in Deland. I attended Deland High School. Um, I was in public school my whole life in Volusia County. Okay. Um, I was the bulldog. I went to Deland Middle. I went to be a terrier. And then I ended up being a Deland High School bulldog where I graduated in 96. Well, since university wasn't open yet, we can't hold that against you. So Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. And before you got to high school, um, what type of extracurricular things were you involved in? Um, before high school, I did gymnastics, I did cheerleading, um, I wasn't really into sports per se, just the cheerleading and gymnastics and dance, and that didn't start until I was in high school. Okay, all right, and that was going to be where I, I went to next, <laughs> um, is what, what about once you got to high school, what type of extracurricular so Once I got to high school, I started doing, I continued doing cheerleading, but then I also played soccer and I ran track. Okay, all right. And uh, did any of that continue once you got to college? Any of the extra No, um, I did a little bit of the cheerleading uh, for intramurals for my sorority that I was in in college at Florida State, but I didn't, um, I didn't pursue any of the soccer or track or anything once I got to college. And I didn't start that till high school. So that's one thing I do want to tell students that I had never had any formal training. I never was in club sports or did anything prior to high school. It was one of those, I got to high school, I walked on the soccer field and I tried it for the first time. So I encourage, I encourage students to just give, give something a try. Just because you didn't grow up doing it and you didn't play on travel ball teams and you weren't on leagues, that doesn't mean you're not gonna excel and be amazing and find your passion, which we'll get into later where I found right. my passion. Right. Um, well, you know what? We'll, we'll go ahead and, and kind of get to that <laughs> since, since you just went there. Um, and, and I'll ask that question. Um, what, how do, how important do you feel that extracurricular activities, whether you're talking sports, whether you're talking, you know, drama, band, uh, any of the opportunities that kids have in high school? How important do you feel that they are for kids, and why? Yeah, well, I feel like the sports, the extracurricular. Um, it teaches you at a young age to be dedicated to something, to be people depend on you. And that's, I think, one of the problems that we see a lot in, you know, employees in different industries. People just don't show up when they're supposed to show up. If you play on a team and you're in team sports, your team is depending on you, whether you're feeling under the weather, whether you're feeling, you know, 
just having a bad day or you get into a fight with your girlfriend who's on your team, you've got to, you've got to suck it up and you got to do it. And that's how it is in the professional world. Um, we all have to be respectful of each other. Do we have to hang out and be friends with each other all the time? No, but in a team environment, respect your teammates and, you know, learn different personalities. We all have different personalities and we learn what works for some people might not work for others. And, you know, some people like to be talked to, and I tell this to my marketing students in business, some people in business, they want to tell me the facts I want to know and I'm done. Whereas some people, they want a little bit more information. They want to be fluffed up. So you learn how to deal with type A personalities, type B personalities. But with sports, it really teaches you dedication. It teaches you teamwork. Um, you build a bond with some of the people that I'm still very close friends with. It's people that I built a close bond to. We were in stressful situations. We were at games together um, where we had to depend on each other and really just trust each other. So I think with the team sports, it really um, gives students and, and kids something to be motivated and to be better and make goals, you know, start, start something, act upon it and just finish it. Right, right. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on with that on how it relates to the, the real world. Um, and, and I know that uh, your kids are involved with some extracurricular things. Uh, what, what are they involved with, your children? Yeah, my son, Carson, he'll be going to high school. He's a lefty, so he plays baseball. Um, he plays typically plays in the outfield, and he pitches. And those are really his only two positions that he plays. He's limited because of being a lefty. Um, my daughter, Reese, she's not into sports at all. She's more artsy. She's more of a gamer. And then my um, third child, Caroline, she's really into gymnastics and she's just kind of a natural. Things come very easily to her. And um, she she just wants to try gymnastics and cheerleading and she's all girl. Right. Right. OK. So, again, you got all, you're all just, three different yeah. personalities <laughs> raised the same way and they're right. completely different. So it's just, isn't that crazy? And, it's really taught me a lot about dealing with students. You know, some students are super sportsy, some are artsy, some are creative and, you know, everybody, but each one of them have their own talents and their own things to contribute. So it's really taught me that what might make my youngest child who's super sporty happy isn't going to make my middle child who's a gamer, who's more creative and artsy. They different, you know, different strokes for different things. Right, right definitely. Um, and and looking back now on your high school self, um, is there is there anything you wish that you would have tried that you didn't try? Not not any regrets, but anything um, you wish you would have tried that you didn't. As far as our, I don't we're, I have some regrets and we can get into that, too, if you'd like to. But um, um, no, I kind of tried. I tried everything that I wanted to try. If there was a sport or something I wanted to do, I just gave it a whirl. I wasn't afraid to just get out there and, and give it a try. Okay. Um, it, I mean, if you'd like to talk regrets, we can, but that uh, might be a totally <laughs> different thing. I mean. My only, uh, one of my regrets is I didn't hone in on my skill. Um, learning later on that I had, you know, some natural talent. I wish I could have found a coach or somebody that would have believed in me that kind of would have sat me down and said, hey, you've got a lot of natural talent. If you um, if you prioritize your skills and you work on it and get better, then you can really, you know, do something great. You can have college paid for or you can you can do great things. And I just feel like I, I never really had that person to sit down and tell me that. I did have a lot of natural talent. I was really worried about, you know, just like high schoolers are now about the social aspect and hanging out with my friends and going to the beach and doing all those things, which is great. Um, but I just wish that I would have realized the talent I had in high school and learned how valuable that could have been as far as, you know, getting a scholarship to a D3 school or something that could have helped me pay for my school because I had to pay for that on my own. Right, right. Yeah, and, and I, I, I hope people, I hope students and parents listen to that part a little bit more, you know, uh, because as you know, uh, paying for that college, it's 
it'll stay with you a long time. It's a lot of money. <laughs> and I had a great upbringing. I had great parents. My parents worked, you know, eight to five, and they both worked a lot of hours. My dad sometimes didn't get home till 11 o'clock. It wasn't because I didn't have the support at home. I had right. a lot of support at home. I just had nobody to tell me like, hey, you're you're pretty good at this. And if you work hard and you're kind of dedicated to it, you could do something really great. Like you could not have college bills to pay back 10 years after you graduated college or something. Right. someone that just really sent me down. And that's one of the things with my marketing kids. I tried to tell them like, you know, a little, this is your job. Your report card is your grades. Don't fail your job. And if you can really like stay focused, I promise you it'll be awesome in the long run. It's like if I had a big suitcase with all this money, I'm giving it to you. Are you going to leave it on the table and walk by it? Or are you going to grab the suitcase and do something with it? And that's what I tell my students, you know, get good grades, practice SAT. There's free money out there to get it. But right. it's not going to come easy. If it did, everyone would get it. Right. And well, maybe you just answered my next question. <laughs> um, what What is one thing that you hope that students get from being in, in Mrs. Taylor's class? Well, first of all, I want them to get real life skills. I want them to learn how to talk to people, to look at people in the eye. I'd say shake your hand, but I think the, the handshake <laughs> might be extinct right now. Right, um, right. Just just people skills, how to deal with business. Um, I want them to have real life experiences and um, things they can take, how to balance a checkbook, how to calculate simple interest if you're gonna buy a car or finance a house, um, how, how, how social media works, how advertising works, why they want you to get to buy their things. And I want it to be fun with them. Right now, during this whole crazy pandemic, I have my students doing a lot of assignments that deal with what we're living in right now as far as nascar racing and how they're continuing and what's going to happen to the airlines and the food industry and they're doing assignments that have real life practical things that they can take something out of and as a non-core class i want my class to be to be fun i want the kids to enjoy it i want them i want it to be tailored to what they like so if they're in the sports, then they can do something that relates to football. If they're not in the sports, they can do something that relates to a concert. Um, there's many ways that they can choose different aspects that tailor to the things they like. Um, I also want them to know that I'm here for them. I, I care for them. Um, we all get mad, but I, we all um, sometimes say things we might not mean. And I, I get that with kids. But at the end of the day, I have their best interest at heart and I care about them. And, you know, it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, is yesterday, today's a new day. And I like to tell my students, you know, we start fresh every day. There's no hard feelings. When you walk in the door today, it's a new day. And, you know, I also believe if you want respect, you have to give respect. So it's a two way street in my classroom. Right, right. And the best part about work at university? Um, whew, that's a hard one. Definitely. Um, my colleagues I work with, I, I really genuinely, everybody, I feel like wants everyone to succeed. We're all there to help each other. We all, um, we all, all mean well for each other. So I love the faculty. I love the staff. Um, and, and just the, the, the Titans. I, I love the school, but everyone, you know, they are, they take care of the school and everybody wants what's best. Everyone cares for each other. Right, right. And to those people that are watching this, whether it's the students, the parents, the community, whoever happens to watch this, what would you like to say to them during this unique time? I just say hang in there. I mean, we're all doing the best we can. I keep saying everything's clear as mud because that's kind of <laughs> how it is. Um, you know, we, we get told one thing, it changes to something else. But we're all in this together and we are all going to support each other. Nobody is going to be left behind and you know with that being said though if you want support and help you also got to come out and reach for it we don't know that i don't know what students i need to necessarily go out there and help but if a student calls me or texts me or send me an email like all teachers at university that i found we all care we're all going to help and we all want every student to succeed and we'll do whatever we need to to make that happen right right um and, and now the tough question 
Um, uh -oh. If you could have dinner with any four people, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ooh, four people. I'm going to keep it out of politics. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. I didn't see this one on the sheet. Um, no, you didn't. <laughs> okay. I would say Oprah Winfrey because, I mean, it's Oprah Winfrey. She's amazing. Right. Um, I'm going to say Jimmy Fallon because I want to keep it funny. I need to keep it light and right. easy. Um, Cooper Anderson because I need his intelligence. And let's see, we got Oprah, we got Jimmy Fallon, Cooper Anderson. Let's see, who's one other person I can throw in the mix? To me, the fourth one is the hardest. Um, well, as a runner, as a big time runner, I'm going to say Shalane Flanagan. <laughs> um, she's an amazing runner, won the Boston Marathon and Okay. Yeah, Which, it, New York we Marathon, not the Boston Marathon, sorry. If we have more time, we would have gotten into that a little bit too. But <laughs> I know you've got a meeting right now in a couple of minutes. But <laughs> Yeah, I brought it though. I got my medal here. There she is. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, she is a runner. <laughs> yeah, and she did get to compete in the Boston Mar what, two years ago? Uh this was in 2018. So, yeah, two years ago, she got to compete in the Boston Marathon, which is it's hard to get into. And I just I think that's really cool that not only she got to do it, but she was physically able to do it. <laughs> I'm, try, so, I'm trying to go back. Yeah. We have Chicago in October, so we'll oh, see okay. if we re-qualify to go back to Boston if it happens, right. depending on. So that's that's big props to you that you're that you're able to do that Thank and you, you have the time to do that. Um Thank you. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, look, and, and you still have a couple of minutes to say anything that you I might want to say before your meeting. So is there anything else that you'd like to say or anything that we didn't cover that uh, that you might want to hit on? Uh, no, just just if there's something you want bad enough, you will figure out to make it, you'll figure out a way to make it happen. You know, just like with my running and the Boston Marathon, I really wanted that and I made that a priority. And I put a picture next to my alarm clock because I had to wake up at four in the morning because I trained before I go to school. And when I would wake up in the morning and, and hit that alarm, I saw that button. We all want to sleep in. We all want to just continue. You know, it's easy that way. But I always told myself, five minutes, I'm going to get up, I'm going to run for five minutes, and that's it. And I find the hardest part about doing something is starting it. And then once you start it, you start to enjoy it. So I challenge everybody to find something that you're passionate about and don't give up. Um, the first day is going to be the hardest day and each day is going to keep getting easier. So um, find, find your passion and, you know, think about what motivates you and act upon it, figure out a plan, how you're going to reach those goals and then ultimately finish it. So that's where, right. that's all I can say. <laughs> that's great advice. Um, well, Mrs. Taylor, Thank you very much for uh, being today's guest on Coach's Corner um, and uh, keep doing what you do because Yay. university is very blessed and thankful to have you. So well, I'm uh, blessed to be here. We, we were, I'm amongst a great crew. So. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for your time and hopefully I'll see you on campus before too long. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Bye Titans. Have a okay. good day. See ya.